Hello, I'm Hank Alessio, a friend of John Cahill's, and uh, several people have wanted to be here today but couldn't make it and have asked me to read a few things from them. Uh, our fire chief, Mr. Slammon, wanted to be here, uh, saying that I wish that I could share the times that I spent with Mr. Cahill at Carboni's eating dinner and when he started to share some of his stories with me. Thank you. I have an email that I received from Skip Irvine. Now that's a uh, quite well-known name in town. Uh, Skip and his wife Karen several years ago left to go to North Carolina to seek his, seek his fame and fortune but he hasn't forgotten Hopkinton. And Skip writes, Johnny Cahill was our postman down the lane during my childhood years. We lived at 5 Claflin Street in those days and the postman would walk many of the in-town routes and you could set your watch by when Johnny Cahill would walk up the street each day. Often I would greet Johnny at the door and take the mail from him and deliver it to my mom in the kitchen. From time to time, Johnny would offer a handshake and a smile to this young boy at the door. I remember looking up to Johnny, thinking about this man who each day, no matter the weather, walked up the street to deliver our family some communication to the world outside of Hopkinton. I was always impressed by the strength of this man who would do his job day after day, year after year. I developed a deep respect for Johnny and looked up to him as an example. A man I wanted to be one day. I remember my parents telling me of his hero heroism in the war, something Johnny would apparently not discuss the service of his country. But it was made very clear to me that this made, man made a difference and contributed to the freedom we enjoy as Americans. I remember years later sitting in the kitchen on C Street one winter day as this newspaper delivery boy, me, being invited in to warm before moving on. John and his wife Evelyn welcomed me like a member of their family with hot tea and a freshly baked pastry. I remember at the time thinking that Johnny would never stop on his route, sometimes graciously accepting a snack, but always moving on with a thank you and a smile as the mail needed to be delivered. Johnny Cahill, in his own way, served as a mentor to me, and I expect many others of my generation in Hopkinton, as he served the country and his community with energy, dedication, and respect. This was a man of deep character and conviction, a humble man who throughout my life was a sh shining light in Hopkinton, representing that is what is good in the world. May he rest in peace. This is such an honor to be here today at Veterans. My son is a veteran, and so I really have a lot of feeling, just like all of you do, for our dear veterans. George Broder remembers working with John Cahill. John worked for Dad for a while as a carpenter, along with Mary Foy. My favorite remembrance of John is when he was working for Charlie Wright at the Hopkinton Grain Store at the time when freight still came by train. On a day during the summer between my sophomore and junior years, when I worked with Bobby Crude Wright, Maxine's brother, for Orrin Cotell, who was running a dairy farm out of Herman Lauder's barn, 
a load of grain had arrived in a boxcar at the grain store for Oren. Crude and me went to the grain store with Oren's steak bodied truck to unload the grain car and bring it back to the barn in Woodville. The grain bags weighed 100 pounds each. John was standing on top of the grain stack and would place a grain bag on my shoulder and Bobby's. Then we would tip them off onto the truck. The bed of the truck was at the same level as the floor of the grain car. Bobby told John to put a sack of grain on each of his shoulders. I did the same and all was going well until I asked John to put a sack of grain crossways over the two that I was carrying on my shoulders so that it was also resting on my head, 300 pounds. That was my first mistake. My next mistake was a misstep on the slippery grain car floor where I ended up hitting the floor and my one and only lifetime split. I had ruptured myself. John called Ma to meet him and hauled me up to Doc Joe's. I sat out the next couple of weeks of summer at home and showed up for football a week late. I cringe each time our 60-year-old baby brother does a split. Ouch! <laughs> so that's George's favorite memory of dear John Cahill, who we all loved. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mary Beattie Harrington. I uh, used to live next across the street from John Cale. My parents bought the house across the street from him in 1935, and we moved in in 1936 when I was born. John and his family were great neighbors. He uh, was about 11 years old at that time and uh, his older sister was my babysitter. John uh, used to come through our yard to go to B Street uh, to his visit with his friends. And uh, when I was in the playpen, he would holler, Mrs. Beattie, uh, Mrs. Beattie, her diapers are off. And finally one day, uh, he, he said, Mrs. Beattie, and my mother said, I'll be right out, and he said, no, I've already taken care of her. Uh, his mother was a, a nurse, and uh, she was a great support when my dad was sick back in 1942 and was in bed for 11, 11 weeks with rheumatic fever. We uh, will always remember the close relationship that we had with all of the Cahills, especially with John. And when he went off to the service and came back uh, on leave, he brought his fi fiance, Evelyn, to come and meet my mother and my father and my brother and I. He was a true, true Hopkintonian and a wonderful uh, uh, service uh, man. We shall always remember his contribution to this country. Thank you. I am Susan Ressler. I'm a neighbor of Jack and Johnny Cahill. And how I really know Johnny is mostly from having been very good friends with Evelyn. And when Evelyn died, um, it was really hard. Um, for me um, and as the years went by uh, it became apparent that Johnny really needed help with things and he would call me. Uh, Sue, um, the squirrels have eaten through the ceiling in the living room and I wonder if you would be so kind as to come over here and patch the ceiling for me. Uh, okay Johnny and so I would go over and patch the ceiling and that led to my painting the exterior of his house which led to my fixing everything from light bulbs to making breakfast um, and for a while the making of breakfast or lunch or whatever uh, went well until the fall that he took here coming into the senior center and 
as time went on, it became harder and harder for him to eat the solid foods that he loved. Um, and what he really looked forward to became his poker nights with the guys. Um, I hate to say this, Ronnie, if you're hearing this, but the reality was that Ronnie and um, um, their dear friends would get together and they would play, I don't know what the card game was that they played, but it drove Johnny and Pat and anybody else who was there, your husband, crazy because all they would do was talk, the women. And it was Tuesday nights that he loved and no one was allowed to come in there and speak when they were playing cards. As hard as it's been for a lot of people, knowing that Johnny's gone, he was so ready. He had had enough and was all set with saying goodbye. My name is Rick McMillan. Uh, I admired John Cahill when he was working at the grain store. He grew up down the street from me. I grew up in his neighborhood, knew his father and mother. I knew Evelyn. He was a great guy. He also served on the fire department, which many people don't remember. Uh, he did a lot of service to the town, and uh, I've worked with him for years in different places, and he was, I, I admire him greatly. So, thank you. Uh, my name is Mike Shepard. Um, <clears throat> I've known John, I, I knew John back when I was in high school. Uh, John was a letter carrier at my, my then girlfriend's house. Um, Karen and uh, lived down on Claflin Ave. And my first run in with John was uh, <clears throat> he stopped me in the street and said, Hey, you're dating that girl on Claflin Ave. And I said, Yeah. He says, Why don't you fix her damn porch before I fall through it? And that's where I first met John. And uh, over the years, <clears throat> I grew to love John and respect John. And I firmly believe there are a few people in your life that touch your lives that make you a better person. John was always a gentleman. John was always respectful. And uh, I'm really happy to have known John. Thank you. Okay, my name is Ronnie Billado. And I first met John K. Hill about nine and a half years ago this past summer. We were, my husband and I were walking at the state park and all of a sudden I heard, hey neighbor. I said to my husband, who is that? because nobody yells out, hey neighbor. So he says, oh, that's the, the retired um, mailman in our town. I never knew John before because I worked days and my husband was home sometimes throughout the day because he owned a construction business. So every time we went down to the state park and we did our walk, I would hear, hey neighbor. I was introduced to Ray Fair and John K. Hill. When the Senior Center opened up in 1906, I became a hostess here at the dining room. And one day I was walking down the hall and I hear, hey neighbor, and I'm saying, I know that voice, it's gotta be Mr. Cahill. So we started talking, got reacquainted. A couple of months later, I'm sitting at the desk at the hostess and John said how would you like to go out to dinner with me and I says why not I'm a widow he's a widower and so Friday night became our as he put it our date night John liked to go out to expensive restaurants I felt uncomfortable at that point because I was never one to go out and dress up to go out and celebrate a dinner. Um, John realized it was only food that we were going out for and some good conversation. He became my dinner companion. John's, some of John's favorites was Bugaboo Creek over in Milford, the 99 in Milford the Algerian restaurant out in uh, Framingham, uh, Fresco out in Upton. 
Wildwood was one of them that he liked in Marlboro. And at the very end, Carboni was our favorite. At that time, we were dating with another couple. John called it dating, I said dinner companion. Um, Katie, Kitty Kelsey, Roy Stratton, be we became the foursome and we were like that for about, I'm going to say, four or five years. It was great conversation. John used to tell us a lot of war stories. And there was one time, John was a kidder. He loved to joke around. So we were at a restaurant one evening. It was just him and I. This was before we started with Kitty and Roy. And he said to the waitress, he says, do you mind if we sit here for a while? Um, just to have conversation. He said it was cheaper than going to a motel. I felt like going under the table. And he put it off as a joke. So jokingly, that was John Cahill always pulling jokes. We enjoyed each other's company and Friday night was our special night. We started playing cards on Monday night at different homes between John Cahill, Kitty Kelsey, and Roy Stratton taught me how to play pitch. We always had some good laughs, good conversation. John always made sure we had ice cream at our breaks, whether it was at his house or Roy's house or at my house, he always made sure he wanted ice cream. So we always did that. Um, we always played cards and then we had to stop play cards because one of the members, Kitty Kelsey, got very sick. Shortly after that, John Cahill started, started feeling bad. So our card nights stopped. Around July 4th, John went to the hospital with pneumonia. He went to rehab in Medway. I visit him, but he was he had lost his hearing, so I had to write a note. And I wrote on the note, you got to get better, you got to come home. He answered me, I'm here to die. John passed away on, on July 26, around 5. But a good friend was missed. My good friend, my dinner companion, left us. We will always miss him. I loved him. Thank you. Uh, my name is Roy Stratton. I'm a very good friend of Johnny Cahill. Uh, Johnny, as you know, was a, a local mailman for 30 years and covered miles and miles of territory. And uh, he knew just about everything that was going on in Hopkinton. Well, to say the least, he. Uh, well, how I got to know Johnny was uh, back in 2010 after my wife had passed on and I started coming to the senior center and uh, met Johnny uh, and he used to play pool. So just about every day uh, we would come and uh, play pool at the senior center and have our lunch and then go home. Um, Johnny used to be a great fan of uh, playing cards. Uh, he really liked to play. He liked to play poker mostly, but uh, he also liked to play pitch. And uh, we got to know a couple of the waitresses here at the senior center. Uh, uh, Kitty Kelsey and uh, and what's his name? Ronnie. And uh, Ronnie K. Ronnie uh, Bolado. And so we used to uh, go to each other's houses and play on Monday nights. We play uh, pitch, and we would have a little repast. Uh, we'd have something to eat, and then you know have a good conversation. And, uh, and we, we also, uh, almost every Friday night, we would go out to a different restaurant 
in the local area and uh, get something to eat. That was uh, continued on for quite a while. And we went to all the hot spots. And uh, Johnny got so that uh, he had a problem swallowing. But he still used to come out with us. And he'd have uh, a bowl of soup or something that was real soft. And then later on, uh, Johnny stopped coming to the senior center. And I used to go down and visit him. And uh, he also was quite deaf. So he used to have a bunch of scrap paper there and he would tear it up and I would write uh, questions or uh, things that had happened during the day. And uh, that was our way of uh, communicating. And uh, I'm sorry to have to say that uh, I miss him very much. And I guess most of our, his friends at the senior center also miss them. So I guess that just about wraps up what I got to say. My name is Mel H. Stratton. I was past commander of the Westwood Post for 24, 24 years. And uh, I'm here to say what I know of John. John was Western Temple. He was a diamond in the West. And uh, we, uh, they were feared among the town kids, you know, they're scholastic and uh, and uh, athletic. They were known as the lane, right? And the lane was feared. No one could beat the lane in wild ball games, right? But they scheduled a game <laughs> with the Mount Ivan Street gang, right? Which was four or five kids. That softies, right? <laughs> and they said, we're going to play the lane. I said, you what? Is he going to play the lane? Jesus, I said, hey, come on, you know, they're going to count us on the ground. And the lane said the word that they were going to really take us apart, right? And he said, when we played the game, the lane lost. <laughs> we beat him by, like, two runs or something, you know what I mean? And they almost died. And they almost said, that was a... They really caved in. I mean, they, they couldn't get over that. And John was on the, just, you know, he was a, he was the uh, stock plug of the whole old deal, right? Always, right? He was a tough kid. Right? And I heard that he, uh, I never knew about this, but he uh, he, he uh, blew the top off the fountain <laughs> in town. Right? He planted uh, on, uh, I think it was uh, 4th of July or something, ha Halloween, and he set a charge on top of the fountain the water comes out, and, and the thing blew, on, right? <laughs> they didn't get it fixed for quite a while, I mean, the old hus truck, you know? And he, but he was a gem. And anything he did, he did very well. He uh, bartended down in local establishments. Oh, he was a great looking guy with a bow tie, right? And uh, he was really attracted to the women folk, you know, and he had, he had a story to tell them. And if you want to know anything about Hopkins, you asked John. He was the mailman. He knew everything. He knew more than even the teachers, even the people in town, even the chief of police. He knew everything about town. John, John was the best guy. Right? Of course, he carried out when he went in the Marine Corps. He was handling dynamite. <laughs> that was right up his alley, right? <laughs> Blowing up things. <laughs> and I knew his father, Jack Cale. That was us kids knew him. Center school. We went to center school up there. Jack Cale was a crewman officer. I don't think he ever got after John, though. I think John really ch charmed him, you know what I mean? His son, right? And uh, Jack was only about five foot tall, right? And uh, but Johnny was uh, a good guy. He was a good good uh, soldier, good uh, good uh, Marine. He was right up the Marine area. Right? The, the Marines were formed after John. That's what I think, right? So, and the shame we don't last. He went out, he went out slowly, but he, he, he suffered in the last days, like, who knows what we're all gonna do, but he had, uh, he, he, he didn't, he didn't jump off a bridge or crash his car in his life. He carried, he, he crossed the bar. 
He went right to the end, and he gave us so much a, a devotion. I'm Claire Wright, and I knew John, but not too well. I wish I'd had a chance to know him better, but I want everyone to know that the Historical Commission a few years back with Community Preservation Funds did an oral history project. There is a full one-hour video interview with John Cahill that you can watch. It's on the Town of Hopkinton website. Go to the Historical Commission website. Click on Oral History Project and you can go to John's interview and see John and be in his presence again for a full one hour. It's wonderful, so don't miss it. Uh, my name's Ted Mayer, and uh, I knew Johnny <clears throat> a lot of years, but I have one short uh, story that I, when I really got to know him, he was the mail carrier. Johnny was the mail carrier, and I'm talking, when I was nine years old, it was 1961 or 62, down at uh, 8 Grove Street, and at that time, as a young kid, you didn't have a lot of entertainment, especially in the wintertime, so we used to throw snowballs at the mailman. Uh, we never tried to hit him too hard. Uh, we tried to mostly hit his uh, leather mail, mail pack. And uh, he was kind of a good sport about it up until a point where he went and told my mother, he said, if, if, if Ted throws another, well, I'm Ted Mayer from Parkington, and throws another snowball at me, I've told him to stop three times. He said, I'm going to wash his face in the snowbank. So a couple weeks went by, and we had a nice fresh snow, and he was delivering the mail around the corner, and uh, I had it all set up so that I had him triangulated. I could catch him at a, catch him at a, short, distance, a short throw, but for him to catch me running, he'd have to be pretty fast. Well, I caught him with the snowball. He dropped his mailbag, came running. I slipped and fell, and... Uh, got my face washed in the snowbank. <laughs> it, uh, something that I didn't forget for a long time, but uh, it, it was kind of an example of what it uh, was like back in the in Hopkinton where people treated each other kind of like family, uh, was no big deal. Today I think you'd, you'd probably be a lawsuit or something, but uh, we, knew each, we knew each other for years and years and years because I always lived in the center of town and still do, and uh, he was such a nice guy. Um, real real fun guy and I just wanted to share that small story uh, how he helped teach me a, a little bit of a lesson so thank you and God bless hello my name is Pat Lynch what I know about John Cahill wouldn't get by the senses so we'll only tell the good parts John was quite a character I worked with John for 30 years in the post office we went in together I retired before John did we worked a lot of jobs over the years as bartenders on the side. He was my neighbor and friend for over 60 years. And like I said, he was a character. We used to play cards every Tuesday night down my house when my wife went bowling. And she'd always bake us a cake so we could have it with coffee on the break. And they'd always chip in I'd take a quarter or a half out of a pot until they got around five dollars and they'd give it to me for my wife for making the cake. Well every time my wife would come home from bowling, John would swear to her, make sure you get the twenty bucks from your husband that we gave him for the cake. He was great for that. Another thing he always used to do was when he come home from playing cards, and this was every time he played cards. He would put $10 on the bureau at home. And his wife never complained about him going out to play cards because she got the $10 she thought he won every time he went out. I'm sure Evelyn was not that naive. But the best thing I could say about John is everybody should be blessed with somebody like a John Cahill in their lifetime to know what a true friend is. God bless John. Hey, how you doing there? Uh, as you know, my name is Mike Whelan, and I'm more than happy to share a little bit of memories I've had of John. Uh, because we knew each other so well, uh, he was able to tell me about my father's family, things that uh, nobody else would tell me, because he grew up with my, with my father, and uh, 
you know, of course, my father only told me the, the, the nice stories about our family. And uh, but John gave me a little inside information, which uh, made me chuckle at times. Uh, some of the things that, uh, m you know, my parents left out of the story. Uh, so, you know, that's my, one of my fondest memories of John. We used to call him, uh, <clears throat> when he worked at Carboni's as a bartender, we gave him the nickname of Gunny, which is uh, a rank in, in the Marine Corps. And obviously he wasn't even close to a Gunny, but uh, it, it's a term of uh, respect. And so we would always uh, use that term. We wanted to order another drink or something when he was a bartender at Carboni's. Um, you know, over the years, I got to know him even better. Uh, after he retired from the post office, uh, I used to see him at all these veterans events and he was always very appreciative of what was going on and, and of course the connection he and I had was both me and Marines even though it was a generation apart, uh, we had a lot in common and we shared a lot of stories and um, I'm going to miss him and I'll never forget him. Hi, my name's Eric Sonnet. I was a friend of John Cahill. John typified everything that veterans in this town hope to be. If you look at this picture of Iwo Jima, the blood in that picture is John Cahill's blood. John was the kind of guy who literally uh, typified loyalty. He typified everything that uh, a World War II veteran should be. Virtually every veteran should be. John was a loyal, loyal Hopkintonian. Uh, he and I laughed. Me being a loyal Republican, he made my loyalty look like it didn't exist compared to his Democratic loyalty. Would laugh at every election, and I'd ask him if he was going to vote for me, and he said he'd say, have you become a Democrat yet? And I'd say, no, John. He said, well, I can't vote for you then. I said, all right. Uh, great pool player would have our vet's breakfast. It would not even be hardly over, and he'd be going down the hall with his buddies to play pool at the senior center. Just a great guy for a Hopkinton uh, uh, institution. We miss him already. I'm sure he's having uh, a great time in heaven with all the other vets we sent up there. And uh, Veterans Day is a great day to remember John. Thank you. All right, my name is Brendan Tedstone. I'm one of the selectmen here in Hopkinton. And uh, I had the benefit of, uh, of growing up knowing John. Uh, and uh, John was never one without a smile. Uh, John hid his, uh, his, what he did day to day when he was in the, in the Marine Corps. He was never bros uh, boastful or braggadocious about it. And, uh, but he was very, very proud of his, of his Marine Corps heritage. And uh, it's, it's one of those things where, as a kid growing up with John, and, or not growing up with him, but being around John, the, uh, the, the knowledge and, and wisdom that he imparts into you, you don't even fully comprehend until it's too late. Uh, John was a wonderful, wonderful guy. His son, uh, Jack, another, another Marine, and another great, great guy. Um, Jack was uh, instrumental on my bid for selectman. He came up and held signs and, and uh, was just instrumental and, and he's a chip off the old block. And I had a discussion with Jack saying how sorry I was and uh, just, he's just, when we lose people like, uh, like Mr. Cahill, there's, there's no replacing him. And uh, I, from the bottom of my heart, I thank him for all the work he did in the service, all the work he did in the town. And I miss having breakfast with him three times a week at the old Golden Spoon. Uh, good man, he'll be missed. Many of us have heard dozens and dozens of stories from and about John Cahill. And we're very familiar with his time on Iwo Jima and the famous Honoring the Spirit painting that incorporated his experience with that of other Iwo Jima veterans. One story that he told that I didn't hear very often, so it might be new news to many people, was about uh, one night uh, in a defensive position. 
the, the Marines would try to uh, take as much land as they could during the day and at night set up a perimeter of defense to protect that land. But unfortunately, a lot of times behind them, an enemy would pop out of a hole and get them from the back. So John was doing a very important job on perimeter and he was assigned as the forward listening post and that put him in front of our defensive defenses cheek by jowl with the enemy and as he was there two Japanese were detected moving towards the Americans, moving towards the Marines. I advised our unit by telephone and picture the middle of the night with the enemy feet away from you. Just the click of the telephone could give away your position. It was foggy, so I decided not to return to our line lest our guys think I was a cat, uh, an enemy approaching them. Friendly fire casualties were very common at that time. So what I did is I ran off and hid for two days. My mother was advised that I was MIA, but uh, I did return. <laughs>